All right, thank you. Welcome to this afternoon's meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee, our design subcommittee, and the Equity, Justice, and Inclusion subcommittee of the Jones Library. So I'm going to begin by convening the meeting of the Building Committee and asking members of the Building Committee to signify their presence Call you back. vocally. Sharon. Here. Thank you. Alex. Here. George. Here. Sean. Here. Christine. Here. Fabulous. And Anika. Here. And Austin is present. Christine, to you. So, uh, uh, Christine Gray Mullen here calling to order the design subcommittee. Um, there's four members who have already made themselves known myself, Austin, Sharon, and George. So, this meeting is also started. Thank you, Christine. All right, Farah. Uh, hi, uh, Farah Amin calling the Equity, Justice, and Inclusion Subcommittee to order. Uh, Walter Lloyd. Here. Mia Cabana. Here. And I am here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, the first item of business is um, approving minutes from the January 5th meeting of the building committee. If a member of the building committee would move the approval of those minutes. So moved. Second. Thank you so much. Is there any, are there any corrections to the minutes of January 5th? Okay, uh, voting on the approval of the minutes. Sharon, approve yes or no? Yes. Or, okay, Alex? Yes. Christine? Yes. Sean? Yes. George? Yes. Anika? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you. Those minutes are approved. Next item is the approval of the minutes of January 19th. If a member of the building committee would move the approval of those minutes. So moved. Second. Thank you, Thank you Christine. Okay. Any corrections to the minutes of January 19th? Okay, uh, voting on approval, Sharon? Yes. Alex? Uh, Christine? Yes. Thank you, Sean? Yes. George? Yes. Uh, Anika? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Christine, to you. Okay, so uh, if someone on the design subcommittee could move the August 30th minutes. So moved. And I second them. Okay, great. Um, are there any comments or changes or suggestions to make for those minutes? I see no hands, I hear nothing. So uh, we will vote to approve the August 30th minutes for the design subcommittee. Uh, Sharon? Yes. Austin? Yes. George? Yes. And I also vote yes, so that's four. Uh, we'll move to the next one, which is their recent January 11th, uh, sorry, January 19th, um, last week, design subcommittee, motion, movement. So moved. Great, and- Second. Great, okay. Are there any changes, comments, concerns? I see nothing, so we will take a vote to approve the January 19th Design Subcommittee Minutes. Sharon? Yes. Austin? Yes. George? Yes. And myself, that is four, they are approved. Thank you and shout out to Angie for doing them. Thank, thank you, Christine. Uh, next is the town manager's report, but I don't see the town manager present. Um, next item on the agenda, item four, financial update from Sean Mangano. Yeah, I don't, uh, no financial update today. Okay. Only because we've been have meeting more often, so. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Craig, how nice to see you. Thank you, Austin, likewise. Okay, the floor uh, is yours. Thank you, uh, with your permission, I'll share my screen and with Sharon's Absolutely. Um, technical approval.
There we go. All right. You should be able to see that now. So uh, our schedule, the only two changes uh, since last week is one, obviously we moved over that red line showing that we're a little deeper into design development than we were a week ago. And two, um, this council, uh, this committee asked a couple of weeks back or a couple of meetings back for us to add um, a line for the town council approval. And so that is now here up at the top, town council approval. It's got this purple bar um, showing a range of when that is likely to happen. So we started at, um, in speaking with, with Sean, the range seems to be uh, sort of the last cost estimate in CDs, which would be 75% CD cost estimate. And that's happening at the beginning of October and then could go anywhere at any one of the town council meetings between then and when we actual bids. So that would be mid-February of 2024. So that's what we're showing as a range. Does anyone have any questions? Hearing none, I will stop sharing my screen. Uh, the design team is here. They have several things they're gonna present. Uh, first being some landscape design. Um, next is they're going to answer a, a question this committee had last week about the structure. Um, and then lastly, we've got, uh, they have prepared some studies for the gender inclusive bathroom on the first floor. So without further ado, I'd like to turn things over to. Uh, I wonder, I wonder if we could reverse that order and start with the gender inclusive restrooms. Would that be a problem? We can certainly do that. Um, our thought was leave the gender inclusive bathrooms uh, till the end so that the uh, landscape designer, Rachel, could sit in oh, for, say, the first okay. part, give the presentation, and then... and then. That, uh, thank you very much. I, I'd forgotten about that. Farah? Uh, just a quick question. Sharon, is there any way you could let Ginny Hamilton in? She's in the audience. Thank you. Thank you, Farah. Okay, Craig, back to you. And again, uh, sorry about that confusion about the order. No problem at all. Um, so I'll turn things over to the design team. everyone. Um, so Rachel Lotzer is with us from Berkshire Design, and she's going to be running through the plans um, and the images. Um, Rachel, do you want to share your screen? Sure, that sounds great. See if we can unmute. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes, okay. Well, thank you. This is, um, we're excited. This is the first opportunity we've had to talk with you and get your feedback about this project. So we're really excited to hear your thoughts and, and work with you going forward. Um, to start off the discussion, we have an existing aerial condition of the Jones Library parcel, um, just so that we can keep an eye on all of, our, all of our neighbors and our butters and how the property fits within the context of town. So today the library is, has frontage along Amity Street. Um, it backs up against the fire station and Amherst Works. Uh, CVS parking lot is behind with a really strong pedestrian access across the site. And the history, the history Museum is next door. Um, our proposed project uh, takes into consider those connections and I'll talk you through that in the next slides. So, Looking at the existing conditions today, we do have a, sur a survey of the, of the property on site. Um, so this is a view of the front of the library today. Um, out here is the area that we're looking at now. Um, one thing that we noticed when we were walking around the site and what we've seen over the last post-COVID time is that this, this um, structure has been popular with residents in town. Sometimes informal performances happen or meetings with electrical outlets. So we thought it might be nice to have a space in the design that would continue to foster some outdoor gathering areas. Um, there's a book drop off area and another ent entrance here, which is accessible. Um, we also look at this area as another area where gathering might happen. This is a view coming from the CVS parking lot at the back. Um, looking at the back of the library, the new addition is being added back here. Um, the Kinsey garden area kind of obscures the entrance back here. So um, with the new plans and the relocation of that garden, there's an opportunity to have um, stronger sight lines and greater safety and visibility into the new building. Um, on the sides here, 
Um, this is the Amherst historical property is very close to the edge of the building um, and it meets it meets with a lawn. Um, and then in this corner of the building, just over here, um, abuts the children's area. And we're thinking that it might be nice to have an outdoor space there as well. At the back of the building, um, today it's a little, it's kind of damp and dark and cold because it's on the north side. Um, it's hard to see the entry and there's an existing site wall um, right up against that entry that we'll be engaging with in the new design. On the other side, a lot of service happens. We have um, parallel parking along the side here, two ADA spaces at the front and um, a dumpster and some and parking for the, for the library van is in the back. So in the new design, um, we wanted to first make the, the front door accessible. So today there's a, there's a, a pretty strong step up. Um, we looked at the grades out front and wanted to introduce uh, a symmetrical U-shaped pathway that's accessible. Um, so this side of the path is fully accessible. This side is just a little over, but um, we went back and looked at the grades again, and um, we have a way to adjust, adjust the shape and form to make the, both paths accessible to the front entry. Um, in addition, for the children's area, um, we're thinking it might be great to have well, great to have an area that um, classes or gatherings. I know there's a lot of after school events that happen and programming that's great at the library. Um, some outdoor space for that or reading areas. Uh, fun, fun furniture for kids. We can play with the paving patterns or stamps within within concrete to make shapes that kids could then draw in or paint in. Maybe something that references the library. Um, for the fencing, we were thinking something decorative and something fun and colorful, again, tying into some of those great stories in the children's room. Um, at the front entry area over here, we were thinking it might be nice to have some more informal hangout space. Um, the thinking here is that like on some campuses, hammocks are really popular. Um, and we're thinking maybe these are, these are items that could be set up with posts out in this area, maybe some Adirondack chairs. But you go to the library, you check out a hammock, you hang it, you read your book, and then when you're done, you return your hammock and, and go about your day. Um, we maintain the fully accessible walkway to this entry. And we've cleaned up the parking area here um, so that it's easy to pull in and back out without having to drive all the way out the back. Um, the other area out back that we were, were looking at, this, so this would be on the north side of the building. Um, today, where that was mostly brick and kind of um, smaller windows, will now be opened up with fine gold of uh, Sanders really wonderful design. There'll be great eyes on this area. We imagine this to be a very active area, especially with the strong pedestrian connection back here. So we're thinking this area could be a place with like high tables for both kids and, and adults. So kid size, adult size, for working on a laptop or reading a book or hanging out or people watching as people go by. This area here we had identified as again, a more quieter and formal area with cafe tables or other tables that could be fixed down, um, but then would still allow pedestrian access through this way. Um, and then for planting, uh, Jessica in our office was out on site and she she was noticing that just the overgrown nature of a lot of the shrubbery and vegetation, which is beautiful, but kind of hard for safety and maintenance. So we were thinking, um, Okay, yeah. We we're thinking that um, by cleaning up the ground plane layer with really subtle tex textures of carexes and bulbs and other really, really nice low plantings that um, with good sight lines through, that we could really make a, a garden that was safe and open and easier to maintain. That these types of ground covers can grow in so that you don't need mulch and you don't have to keep um, a lot of time and expense maintaining it. Um, we do, we do, we will have some drainage considerations to consider. Um, we're, we are increasing the impervious area, and this is the lowest, maybe one of the lowest places on site that we can gather stormwater. 
Um, so there is an existing tree here that that we may have to we may have to remove. What that will do is that because this is the north side of the building, the height of the building will create a fair amount of shade in this space just by the nature of the building blocking the sun. Um, and then this area, when it's opened up, will allow for a lot of light into the area that's not there right now. Um, these are some diagrams clarifying what I was talking about, the circulation. So today, um, this access point into the, into the library is not accessible. This is the main access way. There's a, a lot of traffic um, coming, pedestrian traffic coming through here. Um, walking to and from the CBS parking lot, and there's a rear entry. And hangout spots at the library are really just moments, a bench here and a bench there, not really defined spaces. And so in the new design, um, we're providing accessible way in. And as I mentioned, we figured out a way to make reconfigure this so this would be accessible also. So this becomes an, an arrival space. There's the children's space to hang out. There's the hammock space, another seating space, and then the back terrace area. And then for, for vehicular circulation, um, today there's parking at the CVS lot, parking along Amity Street, a few spaces here in the parking lot, and some informal spaces along the side. So we are, we're clarifying that this area, expanding this area, making it safer for vehicles and for people um, with them. Um, with some service access to the back here. So this should, so by, and we can talk about ways to do that, but by pulling traffic out of this, this side of the building um, from this point on, it becomes a pedestrian only zone. Um, and I should mention that we're also looking at making a an accessible way around the building this way um, through the parking area. Okay, so that's, it's a really quick overview of what we're thinking and we'd love Great. to take questions. Great. So questions, comments, reactions to this uh, first sort of cut at the landscaping plan. George. Uh, I've got a few few questions, so I'll uh, I'll just address them all now and you can answer them. Um, as far as uh, dumpster access, um, I know it was thrown out there that we might not need a dumpster, but the reality is we generate an enormous amount of trash and recycling, uh, particularly recycling just because we get many, many book deliveries almost every day of the week. Uh, so we really would need to retain at least a dumpster for recycling. Um, I had a question about the structure because it appears that rather than a shed, there is a corral there now. Uh, we would need some type of exterior storage for landscaping equipment, be it mowers, snow blowers, shovels, et cetera. Uh, and finally, has there been any consideration taken into snow removal, where snow would go, and the subsequent drainage issues with snow in that driveway area? Great. Rachel. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, George. Um, I can clarify the shed. We still, uh, we still have the existing shed here, um, but if you know, we can talk more if you need something different or need something in a different location for the storage of those materials. Um, and then the uh, we currently had shown um, like a roller bin enclosure area, and I hear you. You need you need more than that to accommodate the recycling on site. One of the challenges that we are facing is that the, the dumpsters are front only loading um, dumpsters and they need a 50 foot straightaway. So we'll need to reconsider this area as a team with Flangle Alexander um, and look at, look at the clearances to see um, what we can do to accommodate that. So I don't have a really fast answer for you for that, just to let you know that we will look at this and, and, and get back to you on that. Okay, thanks. Um, and then snow, I think the the management of snow um, will be pushing it to the sides here. There's space in here to manage snow. And in the back, I think this will be a, a place to, to push snow. I think your, your pinch points will be where the building is really close to the property line. There's a retaining wall here. Um, and then 
here there's a retaining wall and the slopes are higher up here. Um, so I think once you get out in this area, it'll be easier to move things around, but there will be a couple pinch points here on the side and here on the side. Thank you. Alex? Thanks. A um, couple of things. One, um, I wanted to let people know that we have two people. So Lee Jennings is um, in the audience. Lee is part of our sustainability committee, but is also uh, does sustainable <laughs> landscape architecture design. I don't want to say exactly what she does. She's got to do that better than me. So we have one of those resources who um, I think she has some questions. And then also um, Melinda Reed, who is on our the library's garden advisory committee, who is also a landscape architect, um, wasn't able to attend the meeting, but did send a couple of questions, um, which I can put out for the group. And then right. lastly, just want to let folks know that um, we do have um, in the audience also uh, some of our neighbors from the Strong House. Um, and so I don't know if they may have some questions as well. Um, so uh, Melinda's comments, which I think Rachel, you may have answered some of them, but again, landscape architecture is not my, not my jam. So um, she uh, asked about the rain garden zones that the boardwalks uh, seem uh, large uh, and wanted to know um, if they wanted to know if the requirements regarding stain, the stormwater capacity is what's, what's making the size of the gardens the size that they are. Um, uh, and then she also, sorry, hold on, excuse me, in front of me, uh, also asked um, about the, oh, the existing oak, which I think you had referenced that one of the oaks may have to come out because of um, drainage. So I think her hope was to keep the oak if we could for shade and obviously it's an ancient oak. Um, she also asked, what's the height of the retaining wall along the property line along the northwest corner? Um, and then had also made a comment about the seating area on the east side of the buildings, um, which I think is may have to be redone anyway, along with the dumpster, because her comment was that seemed a little awkward with the potential uh, traffic. Um, I think those were sort of her main, main comments that I'll uh, put out there for now. If, Great, thank you. Rachel? Yeah, thank you. And thanks, Melinda. Um, the rain gardens were an approximation. Uh, we, we will be doing test pits soon on site to look at the existing soils and find out how deep groundwater is. And our civil engineer will be helping calculate those size. Where those shapes go, we do have flexibility and we can refine that as we go forward. Um, we'll study really closely what that looks like uh, as we get more. So expect to see some changes there for sure. Um, and, and we'll definitely give it, be giving you an update, but that that is an approximation based upon kind of like a gut check on what we see being added with the building. And as you mentioned, um, the oaks, we, we will try to keep it, but um, we didn't wanna promise to keep it when we think that we probably will have to remove it. So we, we can look at that again, but today that area, that area is mounded up. That area is, is actually a raised area. And if we lower, the, if we change grades by more than six inches, it can cause a tree to die. And we're dropping things down several feet to be able to handle the stormwater. So the likelihood of keeping it is, is very low. Um, the question about the, the height of the wall, we are, we're working with Feingold Alexander on the new exit area. And it's looking like at this corner that we're, the height of the wall is about 2.5 feet. And we're able to slope the grades down the side here of the, of the building um, so that it's much more of a subtle, a subtle transition. I think before there was a, quite, a, it felt a little bit higher than that, like more like a four foot high wall with a railing. So that'll be a, a nicer transition, I think. Um, and that, yeah, yeah, this area, as you mentioned, will be reconsidered once we incorporate, think about dumpsters. Okay, you all set, Rachel? Mm -hmm. So Ginny, before I call on you, I just wanna ask a couple of questions since this is right up here. Um, we've come a long way from, I think the original conversations, obviously it's been years and years. And 
My recollection, but Sharon or George or someone else can correct me if I'm misremembering, is that there was some idea that we would do some landscaping on the side of the building towards the stronghouse. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, that, and again, our colleagues from FAA may tell me that was never that way, but uh, there's nothing here because of the closeness of the property line, except that's grass, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And it's the property line that is determining that we couldn't do anything by way of uh, other landscaping. I'm thinking about to the um, to the back of that area where there's a little more green space. And would you like me to answer? Is that okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I I know that there has been issues with the shrubbery that's out here now. Yeah. Um, where people store things in the shrubs <laughs> back. And I know sight lines and visibility in this corner is especially um, important. And when you're when you're at the front of when you're walking by, and I guess I don't have a photo from that corner, but yeah, yeah. when you're walking around this corner. It looks like the Jones Library property, like the the space in front, feels like it goes all the way, um, all the way over here. Yeah, yeah. It does, you know. Percept, I understand fully. It's fully strong house property, but yep. visually, because the strong house is set back so far, it looks like it's on a different parcel entirely, and it looks like that area belongs to the Jones. So I think by, um, I think that that the existing lawn that is there is here. Yeah. Feingold Alexander's addition is going to be beautiful and clean. And I think having having a lawn that comes comes right up into that will actually look really elegant and be a clean way to tie into the strong house site. Um, and will help with George dealing with things that he keeps discovering in the shrubs. Um, but if that's something that folks feel differently about, we can definitely reconsider that area at the back. Um, yeah. So right now, it uh, right now there's a pretty significant wall with a drop. We're gonna take out. Mm-hmm. The, we're gonna be in slightly different place, and we're gonna be able to have sloping graves down. So again, we wouldn't want okay. shrubs there where someone okay. could hide. Yep. Okay. Um, for sight yep. lines. Makes sense. And one last question before uh, I call on Ginny. Could you go back uh, to the I, I want the walkway from the CBS parking lot. That's fine. So it it's this. I can go in these two directions. Is that correct? Correct. And one of them lines up with the uh, proposed entryway. Is that correct? Correct. And the other one is the imagine of if I want to go from the CBS parking lot around the side of the. Okay, that's totally fabulous. Okay, thank you, Ginny. Thank you, Austin. Um, so I have two questions related to this. One is, um, actually one's a question, one's a comment. Um, in terms of the accessibility, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're finding a way to make that full path access- accessible. Um, and um, want to make sure that the your statement about making an accessible pathway all the way to the back entrance um, is um, is definite because we, we are looking at using the um, garden level in after hours events where the rest of the library will be closed and therefore full access is uh, through that door will be needed. Um, I don't know what right now that pathway to the uh, CVS parking lot is kind of uh, sketchy and uneven. I don't know if that comes as part of this or part of the parking lot owners are a combination to the two, but that would need to be repaired um, for easy access through there. Um, But beyond just the basic access in terms of code, um, our interest is really being in full welcoming. So for me, if somebody had to go to a second way around rather than just being able to get into the library by the uh, by any and all entrances that's that runs against the um, the attitude we want to be sending. So I'm glad that 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 um, arch is opening up in the front and I hope the back will be guaranteed. Um, 
My other question, is, and I saw some in the Q&A questions about the, um, the, the outdoor children's space and fencing and, and all of that. Um, my question is in co a completely different category, but um, you know, since this building is historic and that is the front of the old original building space um, is having funky fun kid space um, blocking that corner visually going to have any effect or any problems from the historic preservation and historic tax credit angle. That's great. I, I, I do think we, we can definitely look at that further. Um, one thing that we can, we can do is we can have um, low shrubs and kind of a more formal front on the street side. And then we can do something that's hidden and more fun inside. So we can we can play we can play um, with that a little bit more. But yeah, we can definitely we'll definitely be considering considering that effect. And so maybe we're toning down the colors and looking at textures on the surfacing. Um, but I think there might be some space for some whimsy and fun within that can be a little bit more subtle. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Alex? Um, yeah, I just have one question. It's actually my question. Um, so I've never, I, I have yet to be able to visualize the the community entrance, the garden level entrance. Um, you know, in the renderings we have from fine gold, obviously the land, the actual lay of the land. Is, so it looks like it's this sort of, you know, wide expanse, but that's obviously not what it's going to look like. And so I guess I'm trying to get a sense of when you're walking down that path. I mean, it sounds good. That's a lower two foot wall than what we have. Like, is it going to feel like, are you going to be able to see the entrance and is it, or are you going to feel like you're walking into like a, like a, a, a closed in sort of hallway or how, how are we able to make that feel sort of safe, inviting and open with mm -hmm. the land with, you know, the challenges we have around grade back there. Yeah, I'm wondering, and we can talk, Josephine, we can talk to about, you know, renderings and sketching, and, and maybe that's something that we can pull together for the next meeting, kind of a visualization of that view from the CBS parking lot, what it looks like now, we've got the photo, and then what it might look, what we anticipate it looking like in the future. Um, currently, we are constrained with with respecting the property line and where that wall falls, the grades here on the up here are six feet higher than they are here mm -hmm. so it is a bit of a, a, a pinch point but we can we, we can talk about that further christine yeah just building on that um if you could also bring back the information on what kind of lighting is planned there is it downcast off the building is it going to be light pole all the way back to that parking lot that would be great to know thanks okay. thank you christine so i i this uh imaging uh, imagining i'd like to hear from sharon and george about the this kind of play area for the kids and the hammocks <laughs> rent take out a hammock hook it up come back with a hammock i mean does that from your point of view, work, Sharon? Yeah, so uh, yeah, the hammocks could absolutely be checked out. Um, we had talked about it recently in some kind of meeting somewhere about the hammocks that are being checked out at, uh, or are being offered at, on the UMass campus. So I, um, I, I like the idea. I, I haven't had, I haven't talked with my staff about it. They may have, um, you know, logistical, points of view, you know, how do you enforce that the hammock come back that night and, and things like that. But I think conceptually it's adorable. And there is, um, you know, Mia Cabana happens to be, I think she's in, I think yeah. she may be a panelist. I'd love to hear what her thoughts about the children's play space. Great. Uh, Christine, before bringing you in, Mia, would you like to say anything about the children's space? 
I would just say that we are often asked by families where the closest playground to the library is. So having some outdoor space oh. where kids can go and be is definitely something that patrons have been curious about. I think that we're lucky sort of where we're situated in town that in the last few years, there has been a playground Kendrick Park that's opened up within walking distance of the library. Yep. So there are some options. Um, I would love to have outdoor space where we can do programs with kids that feel like um, not necessarily um, that they even need to be super structured, but someplace where we can have water or a bit of a mess and not worry about kids being so close to the road. I think that that's really one of the attractive things. And even as we've had programs out in the tent that you noticed, um, just being able to have a space outside that is a little bit further away from the road. It's amazing how loud things can get mm -hmm. there when you're trying to do a story time and your library is next to a fire department. So I like where it's situated a little bit closer on that side of the building as well. Great, roughly, uh, thank you. And Rachel, could you roughly tell us what the dimensions of that children's space are, like, are, are gonna turn out to be? It's roughly 24 feet by 24 feet. Okay, thank you very much. Christine. Um, yeah, just a little something to think about logistically about the hammocks. I think it's a cute idea, but um, so these are going to be buried poles in the ground, not the trees. Um, and maybe if they, I don't know how these systems work, if they have removable hooks or something, because once you have people putting hammocks there, they may not realize they're the library hammocks and at night and stuff, people could want to hang their hammock. Um, and just the other part of that is once people are seeing hammocks, we do have trees. We wouldn't want people to, again, get a little over exuberant and want to hang yeah. from trees. But yeah. I don't want to get in the weeds there, but just some more positive and negative thoughts about the hammocks. Yeah, I, I, I'm also interested in thinking with Jaron and everybody else about hammocks because they strike me as a kind of attractive nuisance once they are once they are there. And uh, I don't know, you know, I'm always anticipating liability issues. Someone falls off the hammock or, you know, a kid duck takes a header off the hammock. Um, so I think that's much later down the road. But um, Ginny? Thank you. I want to put this in for the landscape architects. Um, a few years ago, I was talking with one, the president of the Friends of the Jones Library Board, um, who was sharing a story about when the um, when this building was built after the original library burned down. Part of the dedication was members of the community brought stones um, to form the physical foundation of the library. Um, and I wonder when we're talking about gardens and garden walls, whether that might be something else that we could incorporate in for this renovation and expansion um, and our community members um, bringing stones now. So an uh, idea to file away. Thank, thank you. That's cool. George? Uh, just circling back to the, the hammocks in the children's space, I think, I don't think it's a bad idea, but I think it, it's a logistical challenge that uh, the staff would have to determine if it's something they could handle because if they were left out there, they could become an attractive nuisance overnight. I think I would limit it, limit how many we put out as an experience so we weren't investing a ton of money into that because if it doesn't work out, we're left with posts and holes that we really can't do anything with. Um, as far as the children's activity space, I would lean towards trying to make it as flexible as possible and not to make it um, only usable for a children's space. I mean, I think having the flexibility to use it for other programming as well uh, would be beneficial to the library in general. Thank you, thank you, George. Okay, Mia. If there was a way to incorporate some secure outdoor storage in that children's space, I think that would also add to the flexibility that George has been speaking about as we have used that tent. Um, one of the challenges for our staff is just having to lug all the tables out, lug all the seating out. If it could be just a little bit closer, I think that would make the setup and the use of that space even more inviting. Thank you, Mia. Okay, other questions or thoughts from the committees? Uh, first about this landscape plan. Because of what 
Craig said, namely, our hope is to release Rachel from uh, this meeting. I want to call on any member of the public who now wants to make a comment about this landscaping plan and provide an opportunity for them to do so now. There'll be other opportunity for public comment later in the meeting. Bob, Bob Pam. Bob, you're up. Bob. So I don't know what's happening with Bob's audio. Uh, I see Gigi Barnhill. So let's hold Bob and bring in Gigi. Gigi. Thank you. Um, I just have one question about, is this a walkway over on the left-hand side? And oh. what does that go to? Um, yes, this is a six foot wide concrete walkway. Um, it's one of the emergency exits for the library. Okay. Um, and it connects that exit to the library in front of the in right. front of Amity Street. Yeah. So um, I guess I, I do want to remind people the we had difficulties at the museum. Uh, this past summer and have over the years, and I think the library has too, of uh, unhoused residents of the town kind of mm -hmm. making their homes on our porch and in the yard of the library. And I, uh, that may be a consideration for the children's area arguing for a hard fence, not just shrubbery, or you're going to find people sleeping there yeah i suspect all right gg yeah. think yeah so keep it, that in mind I don't sure know. anything else gg no i think that's all for now i'm uh the our board was worried about impinging on our you know on the garden space yeah. particularly, and i i see you've assiduously avoided that yeah. and um, seem to have pulled the plan back from that one corner where I think currently the property line and the Jones come together. Yeah. Without an inch. <laughs> but no, that looks good. Thank you. Thank you, Gigi. So thank you. Thanks for coming. Bob? Bob Pam? So I don't think Bob can hear or we can hear Bob. So uh, uh, hopefully Bob can get his thing all straightened out, but let's uh, let's proceed. So Mia, you have another comment? Okay, Alex? Yeah, I just wanted to either, I, I know Lee from our garden advisor or from our sustainability committee typed a couple of questions. So I don't know if she wants to come in and ask or whether we want to ask on her behalf, but I just wanted to. So I'll re I'll read them. Can you talk more about the pedestrian circulation in the rear? It looks like a combination of decking and walkway. Hope we can avoid guardrail on the walkway over the uh, bioretention. And Lee also asked, I think we would have more success with for, with the community if we had a playful fence at the children's area, but not so colorful. And Lee, if you want to if you want to join us. Uh, uh, we would we'd love to have you, Lee. Hi. Hi. Um, so, I think you you did a good job reading my questions, so I'll let so Rachel let's respond. let's <laughs> let's Rachel respond, but you stay with us in case you okay. want to follow up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rachel. Hi, Lee. Thanks for <laughs> um, yes. So the guardrail, the walkway, um, we we'd have a solid surface. Uh, which could be asphalt or concrete. We're, we'll be looking at at cost and paving. Um, we were looking at a decking material, um, like a like a Trex material that would be really durable, wouldn't require a lot of maintenance, since made from recycled materials. And then 
the the grade drops and whatnot, we're thinking that we would for we would only need like a two inch curb rail according to ADA on the side. So we wouldn't need like a big major railing or guardrail that would obstruct views. Um, so and this is a fully a very level accessible path coming in into the entry and the same over here. Um, and thanks for the comment about a playful but not so colorful fence. We can <laughs> we can get we can work through a couple design options too to to play with that a little bit more. But I do think a fence with vegetation um, combination can be could be really helpful. And Lee, you had one of the you had one other observation. Do you want to do you want to make that one? Um, sure. Just um, it seems like there's maybe an opportunity to make the entry from the parking lot, which right now is kind of confusing uh, a little bit more special but from the CVS parking lot mm -hmm. and could use some stones there that somebody had just talked about or something else mm -hmm. to help find that point in the parking lot. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, that's a terrific observation. I think we're all interested in how that back entrance is going to work and how it's going to look and how it's going to work with the CVS and the observation about using stone back there would be nice. is great. Thank you, Lee. Anything else, Lee? Um, no, I think it looks like it'll be a peaceful but exciting place. So, yeah. Love it. Love it. We hope that is, that is true and confident that it will be. I see um, Erica Zikos. Erica, do you want to come in? Erica? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, thanks for, for this, um, Rachel. That's a great explanation. And I, I'm kind of excited, but I'm I'm still a little bit confused about the height of the retaining wall on that back corner. Um, right now, the grade change is on the order of six feet. And did I hear you say that you're anticipating only about two? Uh, two and a half to three at this point. And that's because we're raising the the building floor level up. Like how how is it how is the the height change changing so much? Let's see if we can in there. So the grades, the existing uh, existing retaining wall, um, the grades here on the survey are around three twenty. On the proposed new addition grade is about 318 or 319. We're working with Feingel Alexander about, about ceiling heights and how that affects the floor elevation. All right. So that that's how that that is lower. I don't know if the wall itself is higher than the grade behind it. That's why it looks so high. Um, we can we'll definitely be looking at that with in, in more detail as we work with Feingold Alexander on. On the exit elevation, but okay. yeah, you have it's it's included in your photographs. There's there's a picture of it, um, and then my my other question was, um, is it possible? And your mouse is like right on top of it to oh. reuse or to repurpose that millstone that um, is something that everybody walks around and over all the time. Yeah, there's I we can we can look at that for sure. Um, I do remember this one, and I think there's two, so maybe this is the one. There's mm -hmm. quite a bit of damage to it. It was um, a kind of a tripping hazard. Um, I don't know if you can see it's very broken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, maybe yeah, we we'll, we'll look at that and see if any Correct. of that can be salvaged or or pieced together in some way. Yeah. Thank you, Erica. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Erica. Uh, I'm gonna see if I Bob Pam. Do you want to try again? Bob? Bob? So Bob, maybe you could check or type a question if you have one or an observation into the, the question and answers, since we seem not to be able to hear you. So George? Uh, just referring back to the millstones, I would just say that they are in very poor shape and that I would not advocate putting them in a walkway just because they are a tripping hazard and they're nearly impossible to keep clear during snow and ice. 
Uh, maybe they could be used somewhere else in the landscaping, but I would definitely not advocate putting them in a walkway. Great. Um, I wanted to just to ask uh, again, Rachel, just to point out on the uh, on the east side of the building where the parking lot is uh, is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any uh, trees that have to be removed? This one, there's a little, a little, a little one here. Yeah. That will have to be removed. Okay. Um, and I think everything in the public right away yep. will be fine. Yeah. And the trees in this area and this area are retained and kept with the design. So we're, we're keeping Great. the canopy layer and, and working underneath. Great. Okay. Uh, George, do you have another question? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that there is one tree along the driveway that's slated for removal because of its condition. It's uh, okay. It's falling apart. All right. Thank you, George. Okay. Any other questions for Rachel about the landscape design? So, just uh, uh, Bob wrote in the Q and A. Oh yeah. Thank you, Christine. Thank you so much. So Bob Pam, Pam says, um, I believe that there will be a rain garden to absorb water. That's one comment. We hope that to have people lined up to enter evenings, can we have some kind of awning along the building edge to protect against rain and snow? Um. Josephine, do you want to handle the awning question? Hey, Rachel. Um, sure, yeah. I mean, I think we could probably um, look at potential areas. Um, it's hard to define a space at the moment just because of the, the path of travel, um, but that's something that we could talk to Rachel about and you know the general direction of you know the of uh, how people are um entering the building we do have a covering at the front entry a canopy at the front entry um for that reason um that we okay. had introduced into the design document and it's still in there okay thank you thank you bob Okay, if there's nothing else for Rachel, uh, the only other thing is to express our gratitude, how much we appreciate the work that you've already done and the imaginative uh, way in which you've thought about our uh, precious treasure of a library. And uh, we will look forward to more of your good work as we go along. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Nice to, nice to see you. And when the hammocks are out there, you might want to take advantage of them. <laughs> I might. I might just walk by. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You. Bye. Okay. Craig, back to you. Uh, thank you, Austin. So the next topic that the design team is going to cover is responding to a question this committee asked last week um, relative to the structure how much of it was mass timber, how much of it was steel back when yep. it was originally presented, and then yeah. how, you know, what the situation, what the status is today. Great. So, uh, Josephine, were you able to quickly pull together some numbers or a uh, description of that? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Craig. Um, so, so yes, as Craig mentioned, you know, the question came out about the amount of CLT that we were showing last week in those um, diagrams um, versus what was reported in the 2020 sustainability report. And, um, and we did confirm that um, everything has been aligning with what we showed last week. Um, the huh. CLT report is um, right in line with that diagram, which is right in line with the SD drawings and the cost estimate. Um, and so, that just as a reminder to everyone that that is um, based off of a very schematic level model. And um, at that time, we did not have structure, uh, a structural model. Um, we um, input it, we input the information that 
RSE gave to us and put it into our model. And we were working with them um, back and forth, but we um, did have very general information at that time. So just as a reminder, but we feel confident to say that we're in the 25 to 35% range of, of wood um, in the addition of the building. Um, so that would be 25 to 35% um, just in the addition of new CLT slash wood, if you will. So that's the number that we came up with. So just to restate, so I understand it, the mix of uh, CLT and steel is what it was all, all along. Correct. And and therefore no no change in the embodied carbon estimates or anything else. Right. So the embodied carbon estimate again is you know a estimate off of an SD yeah. very schematic model. But yes, yeah. we're right in that range, same range Ter that we were in at twenty in twenty twenty. Terrific. Thank th thanks thanks for that work and thanks for that report. Any questions about that? Okay, Craig. What's up Thanks. next? Uh, the next design topic is uh, the gender inclusive toilets. Fabulous. So I will share my screen if I'm allowed to. Sharon. Thank you. Can everyone see my screen? And I think, Tony, you're gonna to run through the plans? Uh, yes, I am. Um, so we're gonna start by just going back to what was originally in the SD layout, which is what is shown here. It's outlined in the slightly darker gray tint. And as a reminder, the main cons about this is that these were the gendered restrooms and there were clearance issues and it was facing the art gallery. So what we're gonna show you is our, some options. So the first <laughs> option A is shown here and um, hopefully Josephine, if you need to move the mouse to explain it, you can. But what you see here is that the way this is reorganized is that it is turned um, the, the facility so that one, it is open, but it also has protection from visibility. And it is, the entrance is facing the art gallery as you come in, but then you bend around and then enter into the into the restrooms themselves. And we lined the uh, right-hand edge with these row of sinks and then the various toilets, uh, which are all um, enclosed, um, are shown as, as, as indicated with eight uh, fixture stalls there. There is, a, in the con side, there is a slight partial view of the sinks. If you're just standing just at the left edge, um, as you are coming into it, you would begin to see it. And it still faces the art gallery in terms of the entrance, but it does address the gender neutral issue and it does address the privacy versus um, security versus accessibility in this option. And it also maintains the existing uh, janitor's closet as well. Uh, option B um, is that you can see now we've turned the entrance to the toilets on the right hand side as it faces towards the staircase and the elevator side off the public galleria. And therefore it makes a solid wall facing the art gallery, it's not facing it and there's a wall, um, it just still has high visibility. It now opens to the main corridor instead of the art gallery. Um, on the con side, there's still partial views of the sink. Um, and if you, again, you're standing just at the edge approaching it, you do start to see some potential views into a couple of the toilet stalls as you approach. So there's a little bit of a concern on the visibility side in this scheme, um, but it does address some of the other issues. Okay, and then the third option um, is sort of results in clearing the sight lines and making it very apparent that one, you can move easily into and out of the restroom, uh, but it does provide the privacy and security in terms of not seeing into the, the uh, fixtures as well as the sinks. It creates a more welcoming entry into it um, and it has more space to engender the also increase of security <clears throat> and openness. The cons are that this is a larger footprint. So we do uh, lose the current location of the janitor's closet. We will have to find another place for that, but it does address the other concerns um, of the other options. 
And if you, in this scheme right now, just compares option A, option B, option C. Um, and they're all, they're all, all to code, they all meet accessibility requirements, et cetera. So now it really becomes a matter of personal preference, whether one of these really seems to resonate with everyone or a hybrid of this. So this is, these are the three options we have today. Thank you, Tony. Just a couple of quick questions. Can you just give us the square footage uh, difference between options A, B, and uh, A and B on the one hand and C on the other? Okay, I'm gonna to have to do the math here. So the first option A and option B are 23 by 22. That translates to 506 square feet. Okay. And option C is 25 by 30, which translates to 750 square feet. So option C is about 40% um, larger than A and B, if I'm doing the math right. And it's option, is the, the size of option C driven by anything in particular i mean could it could option b be somewhat smaller is that is it is this um a, a kind of design issue um i think what we try to do in option c is that yeah. in order austin to flow around it and with the dimensional requirements for accessibility could it be tightened yes we could probably study it a little bit further it could maybe shorten a little bit in the length the width issue as you can see the placement of those sinks necessitates yeah. moving around it that's that's re making the width okay. be what it is okay. um so that's the only that's the only thing that we see option okay. b uh i think you know could we address some of the sideline concerns it might be possible but there might be some trade-offs so for example and i'll just you can hover on your mouse so mm -hmm. if you extend the two walls there and there slightly right against yeah. the toilet and, sh and close down a little bit the visibility of the opening to the toilet uh, elements that will that will increase the privacy the trade-off is that when you extend walls that also could slightly impact the issue of security so there's there's this balance um option okay. a i think probably mitigates in some ways between the two b and c uh, is a good compromise um in terms of at least the respect of okay well the visibility you know you have maybe slight visibility to the sinks but you don't have visibility to the toilet uh, stall area uh, it does face the art gallery, but I think, you know, the opening is pretty modest. So I think of all the three, okay. option A may may address the best compromise amongst these various factors. Okay, thank you. Well, let's hear from folks. Christine first, and then Walter. Christine? Um, yeah, so thanks for coming up with all these different options. It's kind of overwhelming to have so many options. But um, noticing on option C, the janitor closet went away. Um, yes. and if that is an option, I have to say, I was still really hopeful that there would be a single use uh, bathroom put in on that first floor and this wouldn't be our only option. So was that considered at all that since the janitor closet and the storage could go away, that that's where a single bathroom could go and have another one of these options? Um, we, go ahead, we, do have a, we do have a single user bathroom that we located. Do we have the floor plan of the overall ground floor level that we can pull yeah, back? Yeah, it's show right after this one. Yeah, let's do that. And maybe zero yeah. in. Yeah. Um, we did end up adding one in to this location here. I think um, we had talked about this maybe a few weeks back, um, but we did add this for um, a request later on after the um, SDs. Thank you. Could just stage. Follow, thank you. That's great. Yeah, if I could just follow up. Oops. Sure. So thank you for that. So then just my last follow up was, so where where does the janitor closet go? Is that like, is C a really big sacrifice space-wise? Because of course having more space looks nicer or would feel nicer. We definitely feel that we can find a location for it. The dimensions are, um, I think Tony um, touched on this earlier, The on that scenario, um, on the option C, the width can't change um, mm -hmm. just because of clearances to get around the sink and toilets um, per code, but we could still play around with the length of that bathroom. So this is still very much um, a study and okay. um, and we're not too concerned because we know we can fit a janitor's closet in Great. a location in the area. Thank you, Josephine. Walter. I was wondering if we could Maybe we could change option A, but I think option B and C are 
the best for the acceptable dog because as a wheelchair user, even though it's like up to code, the acceptable dogs on a alternate are definitely tight in a power chair. Mm -hmm. So it is definitely diff more difficult to maneuver in them versus the ones like option B and C. Right. So are you confident, to follow up on Walter's question, are you confident that the accessible stalls will be fully and aptly accessible to people in power chairs? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No. I know that option A is acceptable by code and everything. I'm just saying, based on personal experience, the bigger, the longer rectangle dolls, like an option B and C, are easier for mm -hmm. wheelchair users. Great. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Walter. Uh, Sean? You may have said this, but is there a reason why the doors open out on the accessible stalls in option A, but they open in in options B and C? Because I could I can see why option A, too, with those doors opening out, would be tougher to navigate into yeah. an accessible stall versus B and C, where they open in. You yeah. can kind of go right in. I, I think I think that they can they can work, um, and I think that the opening in yes definitely is a preferred way to typically enter into those larger stalls, and given the dimension of them, they work. So I think option A um, we just did that as a test, but okay. I think option B, option C could be the same way in option A. Okay. Other questions. Uh, I think I see Farah and then um, Alex. Farah. Um, my question's about the, the the sinks and option C. So the way that's set up, is it like, you know how um, sinks, there's usually a mirror on the wall. Mm -hmm. So how's that going to set up? Is that going to be like an airport where it goes all the way up and there are mirrors on two sides? Or how does something oh. like that? Yeah, so an option C, that's a really great question. Um, we were debating this ourselves. So at the moment, um, it's shown without the mirror in the middle in option C, but um, if there was a mirror that was placed, um, we talked about the idea that it could be along the walls um, coming in. So in other words, when you come into it, so the mirrors is not above the sinks, but mm -hmm. they're along the walls where Josephine's mouse is hovering on the left and the right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Far. Alex. Thanks. Um, I guess I just had a question. Um, I appreciate you adding the family, the separate family bathroom, um, because that was requested. But, um, you know, again, the concept of this is that it's a bathroom for everybody and we're not creating additional spaces for, you know, custodians to clean. We're, I mean, right now, the single use bathroom up by the children's room is locked because of security reasons without it being locked there are issues again we get back to sort of the you know public safety versus privacy issues um and i was wondering if it's possible to make i don't know what the code is i don't know if it's possible to make you know one of the um wheelchair accessible stalls like a family bathroom like a a larger stall that could be like a family bathroom within the bathroom, as well as having, I mean, I've seen that in other bathroom designs where, you know, <coughs> that's sort of a sub family bathroom within the bathroom that has a big enough space for a caregiver. Um, which also we did get back in our survey that we definitely have caregivers um, regularly come to the library who are, um, I think could use a bigger space that's maybe bigger than a code accessible bathroom. Um, so it's, I don't know if that's possible. Thank you, Alex. Tony? 
I think that's something that we could certainly look at um, as an option. Uh, it will depend on the dimensions that we would need for that uh, larger size bathroom to fit within these, um, but we could certainly study it. Thank you, Tony. Oh, I think I see Ginny. Ginny. Yes, thank you. And on this same point, um, what Alex just raised and what Walter raised earlier of the um, larger stalls in B and C, um, well, code is basic, you know, having those larger stalls is easier for a parent with a child with a stroller, um, someone having a, um, a caregiver there to help. And so I think that that's, um, you know, B and C to me are, are the much better layout for that reason um, in terms of access and inclusion of, of who is all going to be using um, the library and using the bathrooms. Um, the, I, I'm curious sort of hearing from Sharon and George and Mia and um, if there's other staff here um, about the balance for safety between option B and option C. Um, my personal preference, I look at this and I like B because it's it's open, it's clear, it's open, uh, the door goes to the main hallway, um, and um, but the, the safety issues are ones I would like to hear on. Um, Size-wise, when I look at um, the premium on space in the building and all the things we're looking to add, um, C just looks like wasted space <laughs> for a bathroom. Um, when we're trying to get, you know, more meeting room space and, and more storage and, and all that. So um, to me, B seems like the right fit, assuming that that's not making more safety issues from staff's perspective. Thanks. George? Uh, yeah, I tend to like option B uh, above the other two, um, both for the largest stalls, because uh, I agree those the stalls in option A, the, the the larger accessible stalls, those I know they're up to code, but in practice they just don't really do the job as well as the the layout in option B and C. Um, I would also say with option B, the entrance is more central in on that floor versus option C, whereas if somebody was uh coming down to the basement to use the restroom they're kind of hanging around a corner and going you know down a hallway versus option b is much more closer to the elevator and the stairs sharon yeah i want to echo what george just said i i agree about the option b i actually like the fact that um there is that sight line there uh, the door is there and you can see right into the sinks um and the fact that you're seeing it um it, it addresses the the safety concerns. Thank you. Hmm. Christine. Yeah, so just um, devil's advocate back on B, just playing with like how would it actually be used? And it is this balance between safety and it is everyone's bathroom. But people use those sinks. It's not just washing your hands. They could be brushing their teeth. I know this wouldn't be the norm, but they could be have spilled something on their clothes and they're washing something out or, you know, a million different washing out their water bottles. It's just, it is really exposed to that hallway. And I don't know if everyone will be comfortable. It, it's just really exposed and coming in and out of the stall. And see you're walking in the hallway and you see someone coming out of a stall. It's just a lot. I don't know. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, I just want to echo. We we definitely did get some feedback about you know people wanting the ability to you know use, which brings me back again maybe to the possibility if one of those accessible um, stalls is more of a family style bathroom that's got a sink and a mirror in it, then it's going to afford somebody that ability to groom or do as they need to with a little more privacy than an open area might provide. Thank you. Okay, Ginny. So for, for those issues of someone who needs that extra privacy, um, isn't this that really only an issue though in after hours? Because when the building is open, every other floor is gonna have mu multiple single use bathrooms. So the 
for, for all of the considerations and particularly for the premium of space, the use case scenario of somebody unwilling to use a multi-stall bathroom for an evening event to brush their teeth, um, to me seems like a, a, too big of a trade-off in terms of time and money and space. Whereas if those, those scenarios necessary could happen on the first floor, second floor, third floor, if somebody needed that, that room. So I just want to make sure, um, Greg, that we know where we are and what you need from the, from the building committee. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Austin. So, um, all of these options, A, B, and C, um, do not conform to the current plumbing code, which we, we understand. Um, so uh, speaking with the state plumbing inspector today, uh, he noted that there is a new a draft plumbing code, which would allow for gender inclusive bathrooms, um, but that it's a ways out. He said it's in committee now, then it goes for a public hearing, then back to committee, and then gets um, rolled out. So each one of these is something that uh, we would have to ask the design team um, for a proposal to um, author variances to the code mm -hmm. in order to um, get them through. And another thing is we also need to uh, touch base with the local plumbing inspector. Um, similarly, just sort of make sure that person is on board with these concepts. Um, so that's one aspect. Um, another is that, yes, the design team um, would benefit from having direction, a selection. Great. Um, one of these as soon as possible. Uh, meaning as soon as possible as in tonight? Yes, if we can. Okay, that's, fa that's fabulous. Thank you. Christine? So, Craig, um, did you speak at all to the plumbing code people about these options and which ones because they're all a variance but are there certain things they're leaning towards right now and what they are approving uh, great question christine so i was speaking to the um state plumbing inspector um not specifically about this project actually about another project um also going through this right so this is not the first um group bathroom or gang bathroom that's in the state that's looking to be gender inclusive um so we didn't review this these layouts but one of the criteria he mentioned is that uh, in the current code you have a uh, calculation that the design team does how many occupants and that determines how many fixtures you have um, so i think something that's being addressed here is you can't say you know we used to have one male toilet and one female toilet and now we're going to have a single um, gender inclusive one it needs to be, we have two gender inclusive ones, which I believe uh, is what the design team has provided. So that was one criteria he mentioned. Um, another is some of the variances that we would need to go for is one, the variance to eliminate or um, have toilets instead of um, urinals. Um, so they're, they're like that. They're sort of the, these, these small technical uh, variances, okay. which I guess have been uh, getting through with you know proper documentation and proper um, statements. Thank you, Craig. Mm -hmm. Christine? I only, I mostly ask because I, following in the paper, I see they are okaying some variances, but they are declining others. So I didn't know if we can look at those, what's going on and aim for what they would like. So I have a, I, again, Craig, thank you, Christine. I have a question and then a proposal. Uh, if I've understood you, Craig and Tony, you would like the committee, the building committee, to express its preference about these designs. And it would be helpful to you if we expressed our preference tonight. So my question is whether or not people need any other information before we express our preference. Christine. So I just want to back up. We had um, an SD one that's not shown here. Um, and we had asked for some other options and to look for a single use bathroom. Um, going back to the original one there, is 
that one that we're looking at is very similar to C, except C just gets bigger, which I assume the bigger is if we're going floor to ceiling doors because it really closes in the room and makes it more tunnel-like. Did we firm up what kind of doors we're going to go with, not just for what we prefer, but cost-wise? And with that knowledge, then look at these bathrooms and did we even need to change from the SD? Just wondering. Craig? I believe there was some preference indicated last week, but no um, hard direction on which stall type whether they be the standard one, the semi-private or the very private. Um, and I, uh, Josephine, what was the type of stall, um, did that inform these new layout options or was that sort of, is that still a, a separate decision? I think that was still on the table. I think you're right, Greg, that they were um, there was some discussion or interest in going towards the semi enclosed. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't think that there was a final um, answer to that. But Christine's question, if as I understand it, is uh, are any of these are all of these designs compatible with the door design that we were in, inclined to be choosing, Sean? Can you go back to the three options again for a second? Sure. And I, I missed a meeting, so I may have missed if the um, decision was made on this. So I thought one of the reasons we were looking at C was because C, if in the future, for whatever reason, we decided we did want to go back to having two separate bathrooms, C sort of allowed for that. I'm assuming A and B do not allow for that, right? So C in terms of flexibility would be the most flexible. Oh, I can answer that. And, and yes, we were sort of taking that option, the original option, and we yep. told you that, you know, we can um, potentially have that somewhat flexible in case in, down the road, you wanted to enclose the wall or, you know, put a couple of openings in, you have that flexibility with that um, option. And so C is sort of a, you know, the original revised mm -hmm. to, to meet that. Um, but um, I think some of the feedback that we got was that we uh, folks wanted more um, of an open um, nature to the entry of the bathroom mm -hmm. because it was still a little too closed off. So we weren't sure if this was going to uh, um, actually function in that way because it was still creating um, an enclosure, which I, understandably um, some folks want in a bathroom entry. And, and, and I think that is one of the um, uh, decision points for this for this yeah. option. But it's right that A and B, we if we go with those options, then that flexibility to sort of uh, have two separate um, bathrooms would go away, right? That's correct. You That's can't correct. convert them back. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Christine. So just clarifying, is the SD option totally off and it's just these three or is it four? And as Sean was saying, option SD and C have that flexibility and A and B don't. Tony. I mean, I think this is this is the decision of the group tonight. The okay. option, the original SD option, which were gender specific, um, you know, we've moved away from. But option C, if a determination was made that we actually want to reconsider that and bring it back for whatever reasons, um, it, it has the most direct way to revert. This really comes down to a choice by this group. So you lost me around the bend. Revert to the original SD design that splits it back into two separate um, uh, toilets, men, men's, and you know, new yep. gendered yep. toilets by adding a wall back in the middle. Yep. Yep. George. Um, my only hesitation in making this a decision tonight is based on what if we do not get a variance and we have to have gendered bathrooms down there. Um, it would seem to me that if we go with option C, we won't have to worry about whether or not we get a variance. Am I correct? Yes. Well, what's the answer to George's question, which is if we, if we wanted option B and we didn't get a variance, 
then what? Then we have to redesign. I'm going to point to Craig. I know he has his hand up and schedule will have something to do with this. Thank you, Josephine. Craig, can you help us on this? Yes. So um, the, the variance would be pursued while all this was still on paper. Yeah. Um, so at, at worst, uh, if the variances are unsuccessful, yeah. then we might have to give the design team an additional service to at a late stage change the design because it won't just be architecture at that point now the plumbing drawings mechanical drawings are all Boy. they've all you know yep okay craig is oh can you hear me? well i we did up until the point of more money for the architects and then <laughs> you went silent so we were grateful for that yeah yeah <laughs> you, you've got the drift so if the you know the variance will be pursued while this is being drawn, yeah, yeah. Uh, but later on down the line during construction documents, if it turns out that the design team has to change it, then that would be grounds for an additional service yep. for them and their sub consultants. So there, okay. there's a, a a small risk to that. Um, small risk to that, uh, Christine, and then Sharon. Christine. Um, so I'm I like C because overall I felt the. SD design was good. It just depended on what kind of stall height and um, we choose. And C gives even more space, but yet adds flexibility. And um, if the variance doesn't go through, I, I just hate to have any more scrambling and more design. We've already putting this design team through a lot of changes and just to continue that seems okay. awful. Um, and I also really love those bottom large, um, uh, stalls that add a lot of flexibility um, for more space to maneuver and families. Um, anyway, so I'm like C. Thank you so much. Sh Sharon? Yeah, okay. So I'm just a librarian, but isn't it likely that the variance is going to be approved? A, that's one of my questions um, because more and more these types of bathrooms are being designed everywhere. For example, we have them at UMass. And so the variances must have been approved there. So, so A, and which leads me to B, which is instead of designing for what if maybe this is gonna fail, why don't we design it for this is going to succeed? I believe so strongly because I live with two 17 year olds I know that this is the way of the future and the future is not that far away. And if we can build a space that makes it uh, pleasant and safe and acceptable for every human being that ever walks through these, the, uh, the, these library doors, then wouldn't that be wonderful? So I'm proposing option C, make the stalls in the, uh, the bottom, they're the accessible stalls even bigger put sinks in them and then poof, you've solved all the problems. You've got one space for everybody and you have options to go in. And then we can eliminate that extra bathroom that's down the hall that George and his team are just gonna have to go clean. Thank you. Uh, Sean? I like Sharon's option. I would support Sharon's option. Well, okay, that's great. So any other any other questions? before we then express our views on these options. Okay, so I see Alex and then and then Christine. Thanks, two things. Uh, thank you, Sharon. <laughs> um, if we, um, I guess I have two questions about option C is if we're looking at option C and expanding um, those two larger stalls, um, how how do we do we still have to deal with an entrance in a different way so that the entrance is facing the hallway which sounded like gave some sense of security to staff so i guess i don't know if we could say option c and let's play with the entrance a little bit so i guess i'd, I'd want to know are those things that we can do and right. I think we, we should plan for uh success not failure and then also um i know that we've got some trustees and architects and other people in the audience that i would love to have public opinion or public, uh, yeah, before having to take a vote on anything, if that's possible. So let's uh, let's get the committee's questions um, 
um, answered. Uh, we have five members of the public present. Uh, Christine. I just wanted to hear from Tony and Josephine um, about their thoughts of expanding those um, larger stalls. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, Tony? I, I definitely think an option C, there's the possibility to expand those stalls. There's the, has the most space to do it. As to your question about turning the entrance to the side of the main public circulation corridor, like has shown in option B, we would have to study that. Um, you know, so I think we, I can't answer to definitively that yes, it can work without further study. But as regard to the larger stalls, uh, definitely this has the space to do it. Great. And I Christine. think just to add to that. Oh, sorry, sorry Josephine. Sorry about that. Just to add to that, um, we would definitely want confirmation that um, of which stall, stall type you folks want to go with as well, whether it's fully enclosed or semi private. Great. Christine. So maybe tonight we need to just hammer out what kind of stall we all agree to, um, and then they can go back and do this again, and we can talk about it the next week for a final decision. Uh, Tony, Josephine, what's going to be most helpful to you at this at this point? What do you what do you want from the committee, having heard what you have heard so far? I definitely think that we want to get a preference on the option. Great. with whatever um, caveats or Great. things you want us to look at further. Great, we'll do that. Okay, I see Erica has her hand up. Erica, you wanna come into the meeting? Okay, hi. Um, hi. This is fascinating and a lot of fun to think about. Um, one thing I wanna, question about option C. I actually, I, I think it has a lot of potential as a design, but I do want to point out that the space between the sink, especially with a body standing in front of the sink uh, and the stall doors is quite narrow. And thinking about dignity for somebody who is using a wheelchair, um, you know, having to ask, excuse me, pardon me, in order to get past um, seems problematic. Uh, so that space seems quite narrow. And I also think that an enormous portion of the room is given over to circulation, yeah. which could be um, resolved. And that, given the fact that it's also three feet wider than the other two schemes, suggests that you're taking space out of an adjacent space, either the corridor or the community room, which could also be problematic. I don't know what the ripple effect of that decision is. Um, and so I, I guess, you know, with, with those things in mind, I think that. Um, option B has some potential, although um, I'm hearing from the, you know, various members of the committee, the potential to have the sink um, within the stall is actually a, a lovely <coughs> um, So could, if, if, you know, if that's the case, then could B get wider, <laughs> right? Um, and so I, I just, I'd love to hear from the committee on those things. And I, um, I, I do also just wonder if like looking at option C, um, if the sinks could actually go against that um, partition wall and then create kind of um, take the, the, the north south dimension, the 30 feet, and reduce that um, and then maybe get some janitorial space back because I know that's important. Tony. Those are my comments. Thank you. For Thank you, Erica. <laughs> Very helpful. Tony. Uh, those are very good comments. Appreciate that, um, Erica. I think that 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 is at the crux of the matter. I do feel that um, option C, because of the width dimensions, we can certainly restudy the location of those sinks vis-a-vis um, -vis that in order to address that issue. You are correct that there is a bit more circulation involved based on the placement of the sinks in the center versus option B. So um, it may end up being that it's a <laughs> again without without being able to design it literally tonight in front of you. Uh, it may end up being uh, like architects go back to the board. You've heard the comments from the committee. Come back to us with a revised design, and it and may end up being a hybrid between B and C by the time we're done. Right, right. So I'm going to say something that I think I heard uh, when we were in looking at this before, and maybe maybe I misheard it. Which is option C. If I understood what was said, the concern was that people would sort themselves. As they walked around that petition, men would go one way, women would go another way. 
Now, I may have misheard that. Um, and I want to come back to this question about the, the stalls in option B versus the stall, the accessible stalls in option B and the accessible stalls in option C. What roughly are the dimensional differences? As far as the stalls themselves? Yeah, the, the back at the back. The accessible stalls. They're all the same dimension currently shown in all these options. To enlarge option B or C to accommodate a family or a caregiver, however you want to call this, uh, we would have to increase the size of those yeah. to accommodate that in any of these. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? So I want to come back to this question of the stall doors. So uh, were we, or did I misunderstand, kind of inclined to the semi-private committee? Alex? Um, yeah, I mean, certainly from a community feedback perspective, yeah. the, the highest percentage that we got was for the semi-private. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm I'm happy to let the community make that decision. Uh, uh, you know that's that's one thing. Um, Great. And the other thing I would comment is if we do, which I would love to see a family stall in there, that obviously would be maybe not obviously. I think that would be full walls because that would be an enclosed room. So you'd have one room that was fully enclosed, and then the rest would be semi-private. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I understand that correctly. Thank you, Alex. Uh, George. Uh, yeah, I uh, I'm in favor of the semi-private doors. Okay, so uh, does anybody uh, wanna say anything at this point to indicate that they're opposed to the semi-private doors? Christine. I'm for them um, as long as there's uh, that single use bathroom or a family bathroom offered in some way. Okay, so I think we're pretty clear that we are uh, inclined to the semi-private doors. Now, uh, is it fair to say that none of us are interested in option A? Okay, so let's take option A off the table. Are you ready to express a preference as between the design of option B and the design of option C? So, if you are ready to express a preference, and again, this is for the members of the building committee, uh, let's express our let's express our preference. So I'm going to ask you uh, to unmute. I'm going to ask you: Are you in favor of option B or option C as the basis of the architects moving forward, having heard some of the possible refinements? Sharon, can't believe you called on me first. So uh, I like what Erica was saying, take option B, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so that's my answer. Uh, Christine? I guess I lean towards C and I'm looking forward to hearing what the architects bring back, looking because there's a, readjusting the whole upper half and adding to the bottom. Yep. <laughs> okay, George. Uh, I vote for option C because it has the most flexibility moving forward. Okay. Uh, Alex. I think I like option B if we could, I like the, the layout of B, um, the size of C. So if, so I don't know if I'm, it's a sort of a, a blend of the two where we could have a enclo fully enclosed family bathroom. Um, and in B2, that entrance way, since the janitor closet is on one side, again, that seems from a, a wheelchair access where that's a little bit tight. So um, a combination of B and C. Okay, uh, Sean. I like option C. And Anika. Um, I do like the flexibility of option C as well, but um, B, B as well also. Okay, and um, speaking for Austin, I incline towards B. And my hope is that it can be a little bigger. 
uh, the, the stalls can be a little bigger and that we can accommodate some of the things that we've heard. If my tally is right, and it may not be, that's four of us, that's three of us that like option B, that's three of us that like option C, and Alex would like some combination of options B and C. So how helpful was that? Hmm. Stay right down the middle. Well, I think what we're, if uh, again, Alex may be, I mean, in a sense, she's the swing vote here, but I think what we're basically asking you to do is to see whether you can come back with a variation of option B. B in the footprint of C. <laughs> and that will accommodate some of these concerns. Yeah, that's clear. Welcome to Amherst, split right down the middle about bathrooms, <laughs> but nothing else. The community agrees <laughs> on everything else. Thank okay, you do you need anything else from us about the gender inclusive restroom? No, I think we've got plenty of uh, good feedback here. Thank you, and thanks for all of your good work. And if you could take down the screen share, that would be good. Okay, Craig. Uh, thanks, Austin. Uh, so the last item we have uh, is not ready today. As you can see, the design team has been very busy with yeah. uh, landscape and, and bathroom design. Yeah. Um, so once they have the Stephora proposal rolled into um, a formal request, uh, we will submit that to the town and then we can take a look at it here in this group. Great. So coming soon. Thank you, Craig. Anything else from you? Nothing else. Thank you, Craig. Okay, we have subcommittee reports. The design subcommittee. There is nothing to report. And the outreach subcommittee. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I know of no correspondence. I know of no topics not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Now, an opportunity for more public comment. We have six members of the public still present. If any of them would like to speak, uh, please signify by raising your virtual hand. I see none. I want to say a special word of thanks to Farah and the members of the uh, Equity, Justice, and Inclusion Subcommittee for joining this conversation. When we return to the question of the accessible uh, restrooms, we will look forward again to having you present your your work has been invaluable and your thoughts um really very very helpful so thanks austin, for that austin there's a question from bob pam in the q a uh, uh thank you would won't mirrors on the walls and c make the stalls visible well i think we're kind of back to back to b ish so we'll hold that mirror question off Okay, so equity, justice, and inclusion subcommittee, would you please adjourn? Uh, I adjourn the design subcommittee. That's good. One out of three. Okay, equity, inclusion. Uh, adjourn the equity, justice, and inclusion subcommittee. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. And uh, the Jones Library Board of, uh, no, the Jones Library Building Committee stands adjourned. So thanks to everybody. Thanks to FAA. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank very you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.